Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4. And today, spawning in the Northwest, playing in blue, we've got Lord Baldemot, also known as Demu, representing Team Liquid, playing as the Byzantines. And his opponent in the Southeast, playing in red, we have got Louis MT, playing as the Delhi Sultan. Welcome everyone to Golden Pit. That's the map for today. And will two fantastic players, of course, featured heavily in the EGC TV's tournament, the Elite Classic. They're battling it out on the ranked ladders, though. So it's going to be a, a cool matchup, the Byzantines versus the Delhi. Lots to talk about and unpack with this one. The Delhi, of course, an incredibly strong civilization in the Feudal Age. Look to get those sacred sites nice and early if they can. Now, the Byzantines, actually, I think they're one of the civilizations that are often looked, um, you know, kind of particularly strong in the Castle Age. But I feel like in the, uh, the Feudal Age, they can actually pack a punch. And for various reasons, you know, the 10% extra villager gather rate on the economy for the cistern is actually incredibly powerful. Uh, obviously, it's been a recent buff to them. And, uh, you know, if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a civilization that's very heavy in the feudal age, your economy essentially is going to be a bit better. Now, the Delhi do get free tech upgrades, which is nice, of course. But that kind of boost is a limited one, right? So you, you get the price of your wheelbarrow, your double broadaxe, whatever it is, for free, but it's just a one-off thing. Meanwhile, your enemy's villages are gathering 10% faster, and they're also going to go with the Grand Winery, so that means they're going to get a bit of olive oil as well for mercenaries to pop out. Now, the Delhi, though, they do pack a punch with the Ghazi raid. It's nice and early opening. And if they can get hold of the sacred sites, that's kind of their way to get a better economy. A bit of gold trickling in for free. But it's something they have to fight for and challenge for, right? It's a lot harder to get mid-map objectives and secure them. As opposed to the Byzantines, they just have the villagers gathering faster here at home. So it's a bit more of an easier bonus to protect. Easier bonus to actually to get. It's a passive one, really. Whereas the, uh, the Delhi have to focus on a bit more activity to get hold of their little bit of a bonus for their civilization. Either way, it's going to be the Tower of Victory as the landmark for the Delhi. Going to give that extra 20% attack speed for their infantry. It's very nice, especially if you're expecting a you know prolonged feudal age. A prolonged game, really, to be fair, because of course this bonus lasts throughout the game. But uh, Dome of the Faith, whilst it used to be very popular in the early stages of Age of Empires 4, has kind of fallen off a little bit. We do see some players play it a little bit, actually, with Demo, in fact, actually quite often plays the Dome of the Faith. Of course, it's very civilization-dependent very map dependent. Speaking of which, the map today being Golden Pit. Plenty of gold on the map. Most of it on a central pit, of course, as the name suggests. But you do have two gold veins pretty much at home. One obviously very close to home and one a little bit further out. Both actually being quite far forward for the Delhi, which again, ultimately, you know, the Delhi are the ones that are going to want to be tempo aggression and they want to get the positioning on the map. So ideally, you know, you would want to back gold anyway, just in case you're going to be raided. But ultimately, it's the Delhi that want to put the Byzantines on the back foot, ideally. Yeah, border settlements is going to be coming in, so it's going to get an extra bit of range of vision, quite significantly actually. Increases the range by seven tiles, gives it a little bit of an early warning system. Look how quickly it builds as well. So, getting housed is not really a thing for the Byzantines anymore. Just quickly get a villager to plonk down a house, and you're absolutely fine. Now, Louis MT getting that few late, as you'd expect, queuing up all the upgrades. The question is, what does he place down? Now, you can see sometimes people opening up with the stable quite often for those Ghazi raiders to get onto the map quite quickly. Sometimes um, it do often go for an early bar uh, blacksmith, rather, just to queue up those upgrades and then work from there. Now, if you guys are watching on YouTube, welcome in, and uh, hopefully you've been enjoying the content so far. I'm actually live on Twitch these days, so do check it out if you're interested. In fact, I'm live today, so welcome in everyone on Twitch. How's it going? I'm Worst Case. Yeah, that is a gigantic mini-map, right? It makes things a little bit easier to, to see what's going on, so it's kind of nice to see. Gido coming in with a raid as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you had a good stream. Welcome in everyone who's uh, popping in from there. Got a good game today, hopefully, with Demu versus Lou MT. There's that blacksmith we're talking about. Actually opening up double blacksmith. So yeah, really prioritizing the upgrades. And I like that because, of course, if you're expecting a extended feudal age, ultimately the Delhi Sultanate, it does take time for those upgrades to come in. I mean, Iron Animus, for example, it can take three minutes or so. And so you want to get those in queued up early. And that's exactly what he's done by this. Thank you so much, Gindo. Welcome on in. How's it going, Bleach Fox? Going to be opening up with the barracks and the mercenary house. Actually going up with the Silk Mer Road mercenary contract. Going to give access to the javelin throwers and camel riders. And get Limitane behind this with that barracks. Bear in his mind as well. Like, you know, the extended few legs with the Byzantines, I think it's often overlooked. Like, you get a really strong unit in the form of the Limitane. You can uh, meet shield a little bit for you, especially with the, the shield wall ability. Definitely a nice, nice unit to have on your side. And 
Blacksmith. It's going to be that typical stable Nachi range opening for the Delhi after the double Blacksmith. Now, it does mean that, you know, opening up double Blacksmith, it does take him a bit of time to get on the map. And of course, with the Tower of Victory as well. I mean, I think generally, actually, make, it makes a lot of sense to open up double Blacksmith when you go for Tower of Victory. Because of the fact that, well, if you're playing Extended Feud Lady, you want the upgrades quicker. But also, bear in mind, like, even with the Tower of Victory, just... You know, the fact that you made that decision, it means that you're going to be slower onto the mid-map and slower onto those sacred sites because you're not going to be able to train very many scholars particularly quickly. You need to wait for Sanctity to come in anyway. It's going to be there in 20 seconds. By the time that comes in, he's already got the stable. He's already got the uh, archery range built. And he's going to get a second archery range as well, so definitely posturing to a heavy feudal age play. Demi with that second water level on the cistern does mean he's going to get an extra 4% added on to the villager gathering rate. So it's going to be 14 in total at the moment. And pops out with a couple of javelin throws. Going to get blacksmith as well for the upgrades, as you'd expect. Either way, I hope you guys are having a great morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And thank you guys all for the support you've been showing on YouTube and Twitch alike. You guys are absolute legends. Berry is actually going to be exp uh, expiring pretty soon. So something that he might need to venture out. There's actually two berry patches here. That's something that Demi might look to try and prioritise to protect. As we do now start to see the Scholar moving out on the right side. Now Golden Pit, there is actually only two sacred sites, so bear that in mind. Having full map control just uh, offers the Delhi a little bit less, considering, you know, it's a you know, sacred site that they're missing out on, essentially, compared to a lot of the other maps. A lot of the maps do have three sacred sites. So, yeah, going for the right one. In the first instance, and Demi with the Palisade Walls does mean he's pretty well safe and secure and protected at home, which is def definitely something quite nice. Help protect him heavily. Does it have a deer camp here would look to maybe look to take, which actually with a couple of Palisade Walls here could again be protected. A very nice map spawn and generation here for Demo, I've got to say. Sacred so like on the right side, not capped for too long. It's going to be decapped with the Limitane getting hold of... Uh, a Ghazi Raider for free, though. This is where things become a little bit tricky, right? Because Lu MT is probably going to posture towards, um, you know, plenty of archers, especially with the double archery range, but he's going to need to take the Limitani out, which is no easy feat. Now he's going to be walling up this West Sacred Site, which is quite nice because it's actually uh, not too much of a wood palisade uh, investment needed. This is actually a bit of, This is actually open, I think, so he's got to be careful about that to spot that, Louis. Starting to group together in the Stealth Forest. And yeah, he's now going for the barriers and going to get an outpost as well, just to make sure he's safe and secure in the location. It's nicely done. That's for sure. Plenty of olive oil going to be coming in. Although, you know, obviously going up with the Grand Winery is going to be an extra 60%. That's very nice indeed. Guys, Raiders moving a bit further forward. I can see if he can get on top of the berries, actually. It's kind of a, a, an obvious place to consider attacking. He's going to get a second outpost. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lash, for the raid. Welcome on in. How, how are you doing? Hope you had a good stream. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome in, everyone. And he's actually going to be jumping on this. There's actually a couple of villages now. They should be able to be okay with two outposts. Should be enough spaces. He does lose one villager so far. Limitano on position, though, to try and poke and prod that away. Definitely the second outpost was needed, and just as well he got it. Oh, Limitana just about to brace in against Horsemen, or the Ghazi Raiders, I should say. The Ghazi Raiders did back away. Good number of archers. I don't think Louis Empty generally has enough here. He's got to be careful with the Ghazi Raiders. Can't get too close. It's starting to get to a bit of a death ball now. There's a good number of archers, especially with the Tower Victory bonus. So Limitana numbers are going to start to drop despite the Shield Wall ability. I think he has enough now. Defender's advantage coming in clutch. Plenty of reinforcements. Overall, Louis Empty cleans up there very nicely, and that's actually... Overall, not a great position for, for Demu. Bear in mind, obviously, that armor composition, Limitane and Javin Throws. It kind of gives you the vibes of when you play against the English. Very snowbally. If you get caught like you do there, things can change very, very quickly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lash, again, for the raid. And Gindo earlier. Appreciate you guys. Now, with that military advantage, the Delhi actually going to be looking in a good spot. Should be able to get the Sacred Site on the right side. Setting a Scholar there should be pretty comfortable about things. And the question is whether Louis Empty decides to just try and punish the Byzantines even further. Does he double down on military production to try and, you know, really extend that feudal age and do some damage? Or does he think about Castle Age? I think he's got to do damage because the Byzantines have always that possibility of going to the Castle Age, which actually, incidentally, looks to be the case. 
the demo is almost there. It's got the gold he needs. Just needs a bit more food and be rocking and rolling. And it's got the couple of mercenaries to to maybe hold his lines if he can draft them in a little bit. It's a little bit lacking in olive oil though. Mostly Limitana it's got. And it's now, now starting to wall up on the west side. I don't think he spots this actually. This is open, right? This is surely open. That feels open. Actually, maybe not. This tree might be blocking it. These two might be blocking it. Curious. We'll have to see if any units do trickle through. Anyway, it's going to be the Carthage coming in for Demu with the Golden Horn Tower. And the Veteran Sea coming in after that could be powerful for them. But the Delhi with two sacred sites, ultimately he's going to be on the way to the Carthage pretty soon as well. And of course the castle age timing for the Byzantines and the power spike they get is very nice, especially if they start to get the water levels up. There it is, water level 3. That's going to be an extra 4% on top of the eight, uh, the 14 already, so 18 in total. And then don't forget Conscriptio really scales really nicely alongside the Village of Gatherate. Either way, Gazared is going to poke and prod on that gold vein. Now that's actually a smart play because of course when you do take up to the next stage, the key resource you really need often is gold. And food, of course, but gold is the one that's a bit more exposed often because of the fact that, uh, you know, it's not next to your town centre, but you need the gold for your heavily armoured units. Something that the Delhi and the Byzantines would look to get in when they do get to the Castle Age, although Delhi's yet to place the foundations for theirs, so we'll see what he opts to do. Going to be prepping the barracks anyway for the Man at Arms play. Good bit of gold coming in. Compound of the Defender is going to be the choice. So it does have a couple of options beyond that. Going to stone maybe for cheaper keeps. But also we'll be able to queue up the Village Fortress's tech. Which we're giving the... Well, the TCs, essentially. Uh, will be coming out in the form of keeps, really. Because the keeps, uh, we have to produce villages. And it'll be really nicely protective of the economy that it wishes to go out on top of. Extending the uh, network now to level 4. That economy going to rock and roll in 22%. It's going to be good for them, that's for sure. The Castle Age is in. Now bear in mind with the standing army for the Delhi, especially when you go for the Tower of Victory, you tend not to have too many scholars, so it does take a long time for those texts to actually be researched. So what the Delhi might need to be focused on is actually pumping out high, heavily armoured units to buy time until the veterancy actually eventually comes in. Now we'll be able to try and deny this if he does burn it all down to make it to water level 3, potentially. We'll have to see if that's going to be ending up happening. It does go down in the end. And if actually denies two cisterns connected to each other so it's pretty huge but he instantly rebuilds that kind of needs to really Limitane going to push away the Ghazi Raiders and there's that Castle Age tech up now for Louis MT and queues up everything he can of course I was going to be careful got to pay attention oh Ghazi's yeah okay pay attention I've seen it all so often that you know you look away for a second and they're not waypointed or moved over home so it can be problematic thank you everyone for the follows on Twitch uh, which elo is this um I don't actually know what ELO levels are, but they're like two of the very best players in the whole, in the world, that's for sure. By far. Right at the top of the game. Oh, wait. Yeah, let me try to get rid of that, for sure. Archer's just camping out on the west side. Got to be careful, though. If there's a siege workshop or two, could look to get a mangonel. That could be problematic for the infantry death ball that he has, although... Death ball is only good like that without the presence of a manganel. And Rankin Guards moving forward. Going to push that ever so slightly. Looking to deny the uh, the Sacred Site on the right side, which actually be pretty huge. Gaza is dumping on these villagers, jumping right on top of them. And Akritoi does come out, actually. That's such a huge, does fight really heavily well. Like, it, it does a lot for it. Increases the armor by plus two for 30 seconds and gives an additional, well, at this point, uh, three damage. Actually, does that stack? I'm pretty sure it does. Either way, Camel Riders popping out does get sniped by the archers, but the Ringing Guards are going to be a much tougher proposition. Wallow goes off, back at home. Javan throws, poking and prodding. Does go down, the Scholar in the end has his own Man at Arms, so it's going to be Man at Arms versus Ringing Guards. Javan throws versus Crossbows and Archers. So there's been a different switch in terms of the armor composition down in the middle. Bringing guards chasing the archers back. And he's to group together here, really, the Delhi, just to solidify his position once again. But the Byzantines pushing out. And I've got to say, the Byzantines feel like in a really strong position. We head into the castle age where I feel like the Byzantines are obviously a little bit stronger. Especially with a stronger economy. And Matane pushing on forward. There's a couple of villages chopping wood. But oh no, he's got to move away from that position. A lot of idle time caused by this. He's starting to bring some of the relics back home. Got one in his clutches, though, Louis. So 
get a bit of more of a gold trickle in from that. Manatar's pushing the javelin throws away. and Definitely interesting opening to the game and also the early castle age so far. Now it's going heavy on stone, so it could potentially see some keeps. And that could be important to get into the middle of the map, right? Because we're heading to sort of the 20-minute mark of the game where both players might start to run out of the initial golds closest to their home base. In fact, let's take a look at that. This gold vein, yeah, pretty much all, all expired and he's going to have to venture out to the secondary one pretty soon. Just trying to pick up the relic in the north. Doesn't quite manage it there, Demu. And you see how tanky the Limitane are. It's such a kind of crazy. With the shield wall ability. Spearman by now would have been completely gone. Bringing guard gets taken down. But of course the defender's advantage will be fine for the Delhi Sultanate there. A couple of camera riders added into the mix. and Sheer numbers wise though, Liu Empty in a good spot. Going to try and nab this relic. Now, this relic should come into play unless the camera riders try and get us around and try and get wrap around. It could be a potential snipe there, actually. There's another two camera riders, so four camera riders could try and target that, that scholar. Hiding out in the stealth forest. There, there, there's the engagement. It should be a good one there for Louis MT. He's got a good number of archers, after all. Man of Time's chasing, and yeah, Demi needs to head back a little bit. He needs to play a bit more defensively, you feel, and group up once again no reason to be too aggressive or too uh, too impatient to try and do some damage although he does need to think about the sacred sites eventually a couple of jamming throws get absolutely smashed by the man at arms limitane holding that front line and times now do have to back away the additional crossbows is going to be really nice for the byzantines to help with deal with those man at arms it's definitely the unit that he's going to want to get Range units added in for the Delhi as well, though. You need to be careful to keep the Man at Arms on the front lines. There's Limitane getting good value. It doesn't feel like he's got enough here, Louis MT. He's going to back away for now, I think. Limitane, only two in number, but look how much damage they absorb. It's insane. Well, not so much from the Man at Arms. Now the crossbow is a little bit vulnerable, and the javelin throws. This is mostly a backline army at the moment for Demu. No real front line to them. Crossbows taking the Man at Arms mean that, well, he's not too exposed. Camera rider on the right side, going to take out the scholarly end and try and decap that sacred site. And all of a sudden, the momentum has swung back into the favour of the Byzantines. Looks like he's almost got enough stone for a keep here, the Delhi. Question is, where does he place it? Yeah, forward position to protect the other stone vein and we'll protect that wood line as well. Let's take a look at the food situation. There is the uh, beautiful grand winery with the olive groves around it. We typically expect to see this, actually, at this point in the game. You expect to see 20 minutes into the game, farming transitions coming in. Well, in this case, the Byzantines go for the, the olive grove transition. Mount yeah. Arms charging on through. Limitane poking at the villagers, building the keep. The keep should go up in the end, of course. We'll add a, a bit of a measure of protection. So the Byzantines won't really be able to break through without some siege. Does lose a couple of villagers, though, for the cause. There's a one deer carcass there. Gathers inside and garrisons and make sure that they survive for now. But again, Limitane still tanking quite heavily against that. Demi does have the potential to take the boar. Could be a nice bit of food injection to that economy. Moving down the south position, Demi definitely looking to be aggressive and he's got numbers, I've got good military numbers. Moving on through. Maybe looking to get some value at the back. There's not much here to be had, though. No villages on wood at that point. Sacred site being capped once again on the right side. Snooba with the Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hopping in. And with the Prime, thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Absolute legend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, actually, taking out this mosque is a big deal. Like, gold is something you want to keep control over, and it's going to take the relics away. Smart move, like, you don't want the relics to be captured and, and camped on. And so, it's probably going to rebuild that mosque, although he's going to lose a couple of the Scots, probably both of them in the end. But he brings it a bit closer to home, a little harder for the Byzantines to try and steal those. Outpost. It's going to go up eventually, but not without casualties. Limitane diving on the crossbow numbers. Although, in fact, he won't go up. He's going to pull the villagers away. Okay, okay. Nicely done there to push that away. 
Sacred Site is back in play once again. 10 minute timer activated and pushed off of gold actually. That's actually huge. I've got to say this area of the map could be really important for Louis MT to try and deny. Because that's the primary source of gold at this point. But it's just on the west side, on the wood line and the and the berries. It's got to keep in that location as well. I've got to say Louis MT is going to have a good economy considering the villager count. But every villager that's working for the Byzantines is just working that much better. Especially at water level 4 now. That's going to be a very nice boosting up 22%. On the gathering. Around the back though, massive raid on that wood line. Although most of the villagers I suspect are in the northern wood line here. Siege workshop. Is uh, garrisoned with a scholar as well. So efficient production coming into play. Did build another mosque with three relics inside and two relics here on the front. Does mean he has access to all five of them, which is pretty huge. As you see, Demo looking to focus on that first just to make sure he kind of harms the amount of gold coming in as much as possible. Doesn't want to leave that uncontested. Make it a keep down in the middle. Looking to secure the big 8,000 gold veins. I've got to say, the uh, gold vein positioning actually suits Demo in a big way. Like, it does feel a little bit skewed on his side of the map. And so getting a keep here, <laughs> it's actually going to make it difficult for the Delhi. He's going to need those five relics. How's it going, Deathbred? Hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. Oh, Manganel though deploys. Oh, massive shot on the infantry. I mean, he could have done a little bit more damage. I felt like he would have done a bit more damage, but either way, he's got a decent hit on them at least. Does get a second one as well. It's kind of cornered in. I think the Man of Times is definitely going to be an appropriate response. Does have a couple of veteran Limitani mostly here as the meat shield. Manganel about to deploy once again. Splitting up the army, though, making sure that the one Manganel can't take it all out in one go. Ghazi Red is raiding on that wood line in a big way. Demo going to lose a lot of villagers here. They're trying to scamper away, but the Ghazi Raiders now, they are veterans, so they're going to absolutely slaughter these villagers in a... Holy moly. He lost a lot, guys. He does still have the two sacred sites in play. Limitane chasing that way, though. On the right side, Limitane. Might turn around and fight the Ghazi Raiders, but... Couple of archers poking and prodding. Two sacred sites. I in play for the Delhi one, very well protected. The others uh, pretty protected as well. One's got to keep, one's got the palisades. Now he knows about the keep in the middle. Massive farming transition coming out for Louis MT. He's got to keep that safe. Actually, I love these walls, by the way. These walls are actually really good. Like if he walls up to this keep as well, then that's going to keep this area completely secure. There's a couple of deer camps here, a couple of deer carcasses. But more importantly, he's going to keep their farming transition safe. This is nicely played. Nicely covering up the map. Sex on the west side though without a keep will be denied and decapped. I don't think Louis MT can stop that really. But multiple town centers being added now for the Byzantines as well. Just to match up the, the keeps of course coming out. So scaling the economy similarly. Not letting the Delhi economy get out of control. But uh, playing the Delhi in this style is actually quite interesting we did see this happen a lot when the combat of the defender got that little bit of a buff with village fortresses spamming keeps Louis MT doing the same thing again but he needs to get control of the middle because gold is an issue right he needs to get, get control of gold although it's a little bit less pressing of an issue for the Delhi considering they've got five relics and two sacred sites sacred site on the west side has been decapped by the Byzantines 71 military for the Byzantines. It's looking very scary, that number, especially with the water level 5. Something that's kind of crazy about the Byzantines, as we said earlier, the economy does scale well with the military production because of the conscriptio. We're seeing that in play today. Demu is uh, going to be population capped soon. Looks like he's maybe opting towards the Imperial Age, but the Delhi looking to do the same almost. Gotta say though, the Byzantines primarily focusing on infantry army does leave them pretty exposed to Manganel, so maybe they'll look to get a couple of springles on the field. We'll have to see if he does have a siege workshop. It doesn't seem like it's so far. Something you might consider getting. Looks like the Delhi starting to group together in the middle. Temu though, he smells blood, is gonna move in. Breaking through the Palisades first, and that's a lot of army units. 
Kind of split into two, but now they're slowly grouping up together in the middle of the map, and Louis has got a big hold on his hands to do. Like, he's thinking about attacking up, as so are the, the Byzantines at the same sort of time. He's going to go up with the foreign engineering company, going to give him access to several siege engines. The Hui Hui Pao being one of them. I'd love to see that on the play. Let's also give him access to the Nesta Bees. Moving down the south, and not much value to be had here. The mosque has been evacuated of the relics. Maybe look to siege down the compound of the defender, just keeping the army active more than anything, I suspect. Cheekiness is this. Take a look at this. I mean, if he gets to keep in this position, wood could become a problem. It's for this wood line here, but long term. This is a big chunk of wood to deny if he does get a denial on it. But you can see Liu empty, just trying to mop up all the stone he can on the map. Combat of the Defender will go down eventually. And there she goes. Three Magnus deployed. Oh, he's not reacting. Damn, we're going to take massive shots there in the Stealth Forest. He does back away now, but that was a big start to that engagement. Four Mangonels. That seem to be floating in the air, a couple of them. But yeah, pushing away the military in a big way. Demi needs some spring oars. He needs to find a way to deal with the siege. And the Delhi have bought themselves some time. Going to get Tithe Barnes, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. The relics, he's got five of them, don't remember, don't forget. That's going to be an extra you know, 200 food, 200 wood, and 50 stone per minute. I think the stone income being 50 a minute as well is pretty, pretty hefty. He's captured the sacred site here on the west side and now does have a keep in that location as well. It's actually going to be tough for Demi to push all of this because the Sexite victory is approaching and he's going to make a move for it. Looks like instead he's going to go for the, the heart of the economy, maybe. Instead looks to be posturing towards that direction. And the big thing is actually for the Delhi, you know, in this position a lot of the civilizations would really struggle. For gold, that is. But he's got five relics and the two Sacred Sites really help. How's it going, two-way petting zoo? Thank you, thank you for hopping in. Appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words. That's a lot of uh, a lot of units here for Demu. It's going to take up production. This is kind of concern for Louis MT in the Delhi, considering the fact that the Delhi does take some time for the text to come in. There's no way to quicken them up, and uh, it just has to wait for them. But four mangonels could work well, but there's a decent number of cavalry that might jump on top of that. Does get massive mangonel shots on them. Holy moly, took out half the HP on a lot of those units. It looks like Demi was paying attention somewhere else, but he's got to keep those Meganels protected. He's a back away now. He gets another volley off and does back away. There's not much here for Louis MT, I've got to say. Just a handful of units. That's to fight underneath the keep, though. And the Meganels need to make a... And they need to have a big shot here. If they don't, it could be curtains for Louis MT. He does take out a lot of the infantry on the back line. He's getting to the choke point. He's doing exactly that. Maybe if there's a Scholar, could get a Wallalo. Going to get the uh, Burning Oil to work its magic underneath that keep. Going behind the keep. Oh, but a couple of those... Camel lance, the camel riders rather, coming around the right side, and I think the Mangonels might go down now. That's unfortunate for Louis MT, trying to hold on for as long as possible. But the army for the Byzantines is just starting to swarm. Still seven and a half minutes on the clock, but I think this was a good decision for Demi to go right to the heart of the base. He takes out the army from the Delhi. They're on the back ropes, and it's going to be tricky. Like, he took out production as well, getting another keep on the farms. That'll buy him some time, but ultimately a lot of the villages are idled, and I think Demi could just can do this forever, right? The economy for him is absolutely ripping and roaring. Especially with the fact that he's got the Grand Winery. 60% on the olive groves coming in with, as olive oil. And the foreign engineering company is up and running as well. So, look, likely to get some siege engines. Only po po pointing to olive oil for it. Limitane. Again, raiding despite the keeps. That's kind of crazy, right? Wedding oil. Burning their way through, but ultimately I think Demu just primarily keeping the economy idle as much as possible for Louis MT. I mean, the sacred site is still a thing, right? He's going to go for the west side and he's going to torch things down. He does have a bombard, or a royal cannon actually. That's the uh, siege engine he got from the foreign engineering company. That keep will go down. I think Louis MT is in a, in a bad spot, that's for sure. Plenty of stables coming up. He needs to produce quickly though. Jam throws. They're just tanking, right? They're just idling so much. They're losing so many villages there on the stone vein. Down to 76. It does have plenty of keeps to try and reboom up, but the issue is positioning, right? The map positioning for Demo is looking good. Setting a bunch of Viringan guards. Elite Viringan guards at that on the west side. 
And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Louis MC taps out a great gameplay there by the Byzantines. The economy rocking and rolling, producing plenty of military to back it up. A great push in the end for the Byzantines and Demi. Hope you guys enjoyed this cast again on YouTube. Take care and see you next time.